Our goal is for today to convert from DMS or degree minute seconds to degrees and vice versa, calculate bearing, convert from degrees to radians, vice versa, and to calculate arc length. First, degrees are angular measure equal to 1 180th of a straight angle. Degree minute seconds, or DMS, each degree is de subdivided into 60 minutes, denoted by an apostrophe. Each minute is then subdivided into 60 seconds, which is denoted by a quote, end quote. And fun fact, degree minute seconds is used in navigation and is how lo latitude and longitude are displayed. For example, to convert from degree minute seconds to degrees, you leave the degree portion alone, then you convert the fractional part to minutes, so the fractional part is 2.235 degrees. You multiply by 60 minutes over 1 degree, and you'll be left with 14.1. Then you're going to convert the fractional part of the minutes, which is the 14.1, into seconds. So you take the fractional part, 0 0.1 minutes, multiply by 60 seconds over 1 minute, and you'll be left with 6. So to write our final answer, we'll have 37 degrees, 14 minutes, and 6 seconds. Now, say we want to convert from degree minute seconds to degrees. For degree minute seconds, each minute is 1 60th of a degree, and each second is 1 36 hundredth of a degree which is like multiplying our minutes times our seconds. So we'll have, in this example, we'll have 47 degrees, 12 minutes, and 3 seconds. To convert to degrees, we'll take 47 degrees times our 12 degrees over 60 to get, or 12 minutes over 60 to get that part of the degree. And then we'll have our 3 seconds over 3,600 3, seconds. You mul add these together, and you'll be left with 47.201 degrees. Now, when dealing with navigation, the bearing of an object is sometimes given as the angle of the line of travel. Bearing is always measured clockwise from due north. So you start at due north, you measure clockwise, down to the line of travel, and this boat is traveling somewhat southeast. Let's try a few examples. So, if we want to convert 45 degrees to a bearing angle, first we'll draw our 45 degrees. Remember, degrees are always measured from the x-axis. So, to calculate our bearing, we must go from due north so we have our 90 minus our 45, which is still 45 degrees. So our bearing in this case is 45 degrees. Now I'm going to let you try the next one. We can set it up. And we know that 115 degrees measured from the x-axis will be this way and to measure bearing we have to go clockwise from due north and you can calculate that angle now let's talk about radians. Radians is the ratio of arc length to the radius of a circle. So if we have a circle here. We have radius. We'll say r equals 1 for simplicity. So this is also r. We'll have our angle theta in the middle.
and then we'll have our arc length S. Our arc length is the length of the intercepted arc. So we'll have our central angle theta, our radius R, and our arc length of the intercepted arc S. So now, we know some common radian angles. We know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, is going all the way around the circle. We know 360 degrees is also all the way around the circle. So you know if r equals 1, like we had here, then 360 degrees, so going all the way around the circle, is 2 pi. We also know that 180 degrees going halfway around the circle will be just pi. That comes from the circumference. If r equals 1 here, then the circumference or the arc length all the way around the circle is 2 pi. If you want to talk about eight, 180 degrees, that's going to be half the circumference, so it'll be 2 pi divided by 2. Let's calculate some other common angles. So for example, we'll have 90 degrees. 90 degrees, we know that 180 degrees is pi. So for 90 degrees, you're only going half that. So we'll have pi over 2. Now 45 degrees is up here which is half of 90, so you'll get pi over 4. And I'll leave the last two for you to try on your own. Now we need some conversions for some not so nice angles. For to go from radians to degrees, we'll multiply by 180 over pi. For degrees to radians, we'll multiply by pi over 180. An easy way to remember this conversion is that radians have pi in it, so you're going to want pi in your numerator. To go from radians to degrees, you want to get rid of the pi. Radians will be pi over something, so to get the pi to cancel, you have 180 over pi. So let's try an example. We have 3 pi over 5 radians. We want to convert to degrees. So you'll take 3 pi over 5 times 180, 180 degrees over pi, like up here. And then we can simplify. And we'll get 108 degrees because our pi is cancel, and then 5 can go into 180. So we left with 108 degrees. And it'll work similarly converting from degrees to radians. Now let's talk about arc length. For arc length, theta will be our central angle in the circle, r will be the radius of the circle, and s will be the intercepted arc. When our theta is in radians, our formula for arc length is going to be s equals r theta. When our theta is in degrees, s our arc length s will equal pi r theta over 180 degrees. Something to think about is why are these equivalent? See if you can figure it out. In the meantime, let's look at an example. We want to find the perimeter of a 60 degree slice of pie in an 8 inch pie plate. I chose pizza pie. So we have an 8 inch pie plate and we know that the pie is going to be 60 degrees. So from here we can calculate our arc length. So using the formula that had degrees, we had s equals pi 
r theta over 180. So now we can substitute in s equals pi times 4 because our diameter is 8 so our radius is 4 theta which is 60 degrees all over 180 so we'll see that s is 4 pi over 3 now we want to find the perimeter so we must add the force the radius of 4 to get the entire perimeter of our pi. So the perimeter equals 4 plus 4 plus 4 pi over 3, which equals 8 plus 4 pi over 3. And we can leave our answer in this form. You can also convert 60 degrees to radians and use the radian formula as well if you prefer. But that is it for this lesson.